On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. It's nothing that you can do to stop a competitive edge. It's just in the water. So you're fully healthy right now. I mean, obviously, depending on this pandemic, do you guys have a target date of uh, next time you're supposed to get in the ring? Um, it's supposed to be either October or November. I don't really have okay. a target date yet. You know, I got into uh -huh. a bad accident uh, last year. In uh, October mm -hmm. 10th, I got into a bad accident. And then, uh, you know, that kind of delayed my return because I was supposed to come back in that January. But then I got hurt, so I've been out for a while. So in all actuality, this pandemic really been helping me out a lot. And um, so really just basically, yeah, recovery and just, you know, taking my time to get back. But I'm already back. I'm 100%. I went to a facility in uh, Cleveland where they checked me out, checked my brain, gave me MRIs and things like that, and everything went well. So, you know, everything's been going good. I think I'm no 100% restrictions, healthy. No restrictions, right? No yeah, restrictions in no training? At all. Uh, no restrictions in my hear. training set sparring. I can't spar yet because I got my teeth knocked out and I actually got two, I got, they put two posts in my mouth with three posts in mm -hmm. my mouth and I'm waiting on them to heal and once they heal, then I get my, um, my permanent Permanence. teeth and then I'll be uh -huh. able to, uh, to spar. Yeah, bro, I've been there. I've I been there, bro. I got, I got, <laughs> right. I got, I got into a shoot. I got hit by a car in Indiana and knocked all my teeth out. So I've been there, bro. Dang. Oh, they put posts in your mouth too? <laughs> Now they had to put post, but I had to have plastic surgery on my lips and my teeth with no anesthesia for two hours. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Mm. Well, talk to us. Take, take us back to that, uh, that night. Uh, obviously, blessed to still be here. I think the world has seen the actual accident. Uh, yeah. October 10, 2019, you escaped with your life. And a funny, not funny, but, you know, I've heard people speak and you speak on not wearing a seatbelt possibly saved your life. Yeah. Cause I was, Talk to us a little bit about Well, man, just being reckless. <laughs> I just won. I just beat uh, Sean Porter. So, uh, you know, that was a hell of a fight, by the way. Yeah, man. yeah. I won some money on that <laughs> fight, too. I won some money on that. Hell of a fight. <laughs> Y'all boys are going at it. Appreciate that. So, I just beat Sean Porter. So, you know, I feel like I'm on top of the world. You know, I'm having fun with my friends. We're going places. We just came back from uh, from Miami. Well, I drive my Ferrari, I had a Ferrari 488. You know how fast those are. You know? Them things, think, Ooh. Yeah, they fast. And uh, something happened, I had stopped, and then it just flipped. Then it just flipped, 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 flipped over, and then I got ejected from the car. Because mm. it was a convertible. I got ejected from the car, and then, you know, the rest of history, I woke up. I woke up in, a, in the hospital. And I don't even remember being in the hospital. The only thing I remember being at home. Wow, Errol Spence says currently he cannot spar because he got his teeth knocked out during that accident and he doesn't have his permanent ones. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Head over to Patreon right now if you guys would like to sign up. Great way to help the channel. And I'm shifting some of the content over to Patreon. So don't miss out. Patreon and the channel members on YouTube. Got some stuff for you. You know, I've been working on it. YouTube channel members, just hit the join button. These are great ways to, you know, help help the channel. And um, another great way is to use the ESPN Plus bundle link. Click on the link get the espn plus bundle that includes espn plus hulu and disney plus all three apps one price 12.99 a month and it does help the channel when you guys click on that link tons of content people are trapped at home and you know quarantined so it's a great time to catch up with a lot of content now let's get into it errol the truth spence jr he was on all the smoke podcasts and 
He was talking to Matt Burns and uh, Jackson about that fateful night and what happened. And this is the first time that at least that I know of where Earl Spence is even addressing it, you know, addressing what happened. I mean, I know he did the one with Brian Kenny, but I didn't like the way Brian Kenny was interviewing him. He did it like really weird interrogation. And it was also last year and it was super fresh. But Errol Spence, you know, he looks he looks better now. You know, he looks like he's, he's going through the recovery stage and, and the, the process. But in this interview, you guys heard at the beginning, Errol Spence admits that he is unable to spar per doctor's orders at the current moment he says during the accident he had some of his teeth knocked out and you know it's a miracle that he's even here with us and as a result they put posts in his mouth and he can't spar until he has his permanent teeth placed so i guess they they probably i don't know i'm not you know a dentist or anything but i guess they put temporary veneers or something in which we knew and He's awaiting whatever his mouth to heal fully before he can spar. And they put in the more permanent fixtures in his mouth. So very interesting. I never knew that. I knew he was in the gym, you know, and I seen him with sauna suits and stuff. I seen him. He's doing his runs. So it looks like he's still staying in shape. He has vowed to stay in shape, um, you know, not let his weight escape him in his off season, And, you know, interesting admission. You know, because I didn't know. There's a lot of people who had questions, especially when that Brian Kenny air interview aired. I was actually at that fight, so I was feet away from it as it was being filmed in Ontario, California. It was at the Charlo Harrison 2 fight. And, you know, I got on Twitter because, you know, in between fights or whatever. And I seen a lot of people were questioning Errol Spence's speech and saying, oh, man, he don't sound too good. And, you know, things of that sort. He'll never be the same, that type of thing. You notice me on my channel, I do stuff different. Out of respect for Errol Spence and knowing people in his camp and, you know, things like that. And just what he represents, I didn't want to, you know, pass judgment on somebody when it was so fresh. One, he's lucky to be alive, as he met, mentioned on this podcast. And two, it, you know, that's not fair. He just literally at that point where he did the interview, he, he based on the footage, he shouldn't even be doing an interview where he's walking by himself a month and a half after it. And that's basically what it was. Because I remember it was in December and the Errol Spence situation happened probably around Halloween in like late October or something like that. So, you know, I thought it was unfair for people to jump in with the peanut gallery comments. But I will say Errol Spence, it looks like he's recovering well. I, you know, I haven't talked to him or nothing, but his... Um, speech sounds definitely better than what it was at that particular point in time he said he had his thoughts together and you know what he went through was some scary stuff you guys gotta take a listen to the podcast shout out to showtime shout out to matt barnes stephen jackson um they asked some tough questions and you know it was good to see errol spence getting some exposure during this pandemic but he said he can't spar right now he says you know he had, he's waiting for his, his permanent teeth so you know lucky for him this pandemic has happened i'm not saying it's lucky it's not good that a pandemic's happening but it kind of falls in line because he's trying to take a tough fight so not only is he on the sidelines until he's able to spar because i don't imagine he would fight pacquiao sean porter too or any of these danny garcia tough fights when without the ability to spar so it's actually working out for him nicely given the fact that his healing recovery process has pushed boxing in general back and Errol Spence said some pretty interesting things he says that he didn't have a seatbelt and he believes what it's funny because I literally said this right when when it happened I said that it was probably to his benefit that he didn't have a seatbelt and got ejected you know the the word ejected and you know when you read about it it sounds super critical and shocking and you know horrific but he admits what i told you literally when it first happened that might have been the difference maker that actually saved his life because in getting like thwarted and thrown from the car um 
he didn't get trapped in all that wreckage because you know i guess he said it was a convertible and he would have been possibly tumbling with you know with the car and the car could have crushed him all types of stuff you know so you run the risk of having your neck broken being paralyzed you know it could have it could have really went back and that's what errol spence said in this podcast he said he said me not having a seat belt otherwise I, I i would probably be gone you know if i didn't if i put my seat belt on so that's weird how that's what saved him and obviously that's not you know you should still buckle up it's not like you should ride around with no seat belt you know just on the off chance but for his particular situation in the carnage and the wreckage it actually was probably of a benefit to him to get thrown from the car so he you know just laid unconscious on the ground rather than tumbling with the car and, and all that metal and wreckage um him flipping inside of it and stuff like that so crazy story you know he says he's very fortunate he's been given a second chance at life and he, he said he didn't have no broken bones he had some his face was like road rashed um what else did he say he says he has some soreness in his neck soreness in his hip and one thing that he said it was pretty interesting is that he said he don't even really remember he said he remembers waking up like it happened and then he said he wrecked he didn't really go into the wreck and that's probably legal um advice to not say too much but he says he remembers obviously blacking out during the wreck part he said he was feeling himself that's that's another thing he said i had just beaten sean porter and me and my buddies had just went to miami i was in a ferrari fast cars you know them cars go fast and i was just tripping you know i was feeling myself too much and i i just won and unified so i was living life and and partying it up or whatever and it happened but then after that he said that he remembers waking up in the hospital and then he remembers being home so that part was a little bit scary to hear him I, you know i know this is probably what happens but just hearing somebody say it especially when your profession is boxing you know it's it's a little bit um worrying you know you get you get a bit worried because that's his accent was crazy you know and, and i never put boundaries or limits on another man what they can or can't come back from so we'll have to see but you know god willing errol spence is a, he he's the same way and same fighter when he gets to spar and stuff because i didn't know you know i didn't really put it in perspective i told you i'm gonna give errol spence enough, as much time as he needs to try to beat this and recover and come back to be the fighter that he was beforehand but you know with him making a, a mission like that that is scary just because that shows that he had memory loss from the the occurrence he said he was in the hospital a couple weeks three weeks and he don't really remember that he remembers being back at home so yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to go too deep into it. We'll see what happens. But I, I just know when people go through traumatic things, sometimes you have PTSD and you have lingering effects of that. Like, you know, he, he just admitted that he, he can't account for two, three weeks of his life and blacking out and stuff. Though those things aren't what you would call, quote unquote, natural. It's not like an everyday occurrence. So that's not good. So. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope Errol Spence just follows his body and his mind, his first mind and stuff like that. And don't try to push the envelope. I think Sean Porter said it. I've said it. I, me, whatever he feels, he knows how he feels. But my thing is don't go in there thinking you're Superman and not giving yourself adequate time to to recover. You know, because you see Pacquiao and stuff like that. He mentioned Errol Spence after the accident, like showing some interest, but he didn't really seem too, too, too interested before. So people are going to try to get you. Luckily, Terrence Crawford, he, you know, he's a dog. So he openly said, I don't even want to fight Errol his first fight back because I won't get my full credit. 
So that's one person we know that fight's not happening next. Sean Porter basically said the same thing. But, you know, there are going to be guys that, you know, it's their job. Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, or not Sean Porter, Manny Pacquiao, whoever. They, they might be down to scrap. This is their profession. They have a chance at two belts, etc. So Arrow, I think he should just follow his first mind and his, his third eye and his body and do whatever is really right. Where if you get in there and sparring and you feel great, then great. You know, that's the best case scenario. But if you don't feel the same, don't push it, you know, and, and say, oh, I got to feel obligated. You, you know what I'm saying? Feel obligated like, oh, I got to please the fans and fight Pacquiao next or Danny Garcia. Because as far as I'm concerned, all of the top dogs are dangerous to each other. Danny Garcia is a dangerous fight for anybody Keith Thurman, Manny Pacquiao, Sean Porter, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. These are all dangerous fights. Any way you mix and match these guys, there is danger. Like Keith Thurman hurt Pacquiao. I know some of you guys um, don't know ish about boxing, so you wouldn't have seen that. But in them later rounds, Pacquiao was hurt. He started getting tired and stuff like that. So on any given Sunday, any given Saturday, any given night, one of these welterweights can come out with the victory or a strong performance. A lot of people thought Sean Porter was going to get pressed and stopped by Errol Spence, and he brought the fight immediately to Errol Spence and got it cracking and made it a very frenetic pace. So I just hope Errol Spence is he's um, being honest with himself. Whatever his assessment is, just be honest with his team, Derek James and and himself, and then you know just work through this this situation you got a second chance at life but don't press it you know don't feel obligated to fight pacquiao or a tough fight with danny garcia or whatever next if your body's not up to it if you feel great and then you know that's something else but um a couple things that were concerning like i said he said his teeth which we knew you know it's apparent that he has veneers or something speech sounds better but he says he doesn't have his permanent teeth and he has posts in so he can't spar, which I didn't know. You know, I, I kind of figured, but I didn't know because he said he had been training and back in the gym. So I didn't know what that entailed. You see what I'm saying? And then the other thing is the pretty much memory law saying he can't recall what happened for a couple of weeks. That is concerning as well. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you knew about him not sparring or if you have other things to add on, drop me a comment and let me know what you guys think. Um, other than that, I wish him a speedy recovery, and I look to seeing him back in and boxing in general back from this pandemic. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you love what I'm doing, smash that like button. Head over to Patreon, hit the join button, hit that ESPN link, holla at that. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off.